welcome to the Once Again Podcast. We are your hosts, Ashley and Jason. In today's episode, we'll be discussing episodes 4 through 6 of the 2023 Disney Plus series, Ahsoka. Consider this your one and only spoiler warning about these episodes. If you don't want to know anything about them, turn off our episode now and come back once you've watched them for yourself. So let's dive right into it. We start off with Part 4, Fallen Jedi, directed by Peter Ramsey, written by Dave Filoni, and it premiered September 5th, 2023. So, Ashley, um, how do you feel about Episode 4? We, we have, um, you know, we have Ahsoka and uh, Sabine, and they're working on their ship to get communications back with the mm-hmm. uh, New Republic and everything. Hu Yang gets attacked by a robot outside. Yes. Um, which I kind of find it funny that the robot covers his mouth and it also does affect the, so I guess like the, the sound that the, that Hu Yang makes does come from the mouth area. Like it's not just trying to make it as human as possible. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but, uh, Hu Yang pulls a clever move and like screws up whatever he was fixing outside. So the lights go back off on the ship and they're like, Oh, something's wrong. They go out, they beat the robot and everything. And then they're like, all right, well, we're, we're going to go stop Balin and, uh, um, Hadi, that's that's uh, the girl's name, uh, Shin. Um, Shinati. Shinati. <laughs> Shinati. That's, that's Shinati. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but uh, they're gonna. They're like, we got to go stop them because they have the map and they're gonna figure out how to get to Thrawn. Yes. Blah blah blah. And Hu Yang's like, listen, promise me one thing and stay, one thing only. Stay together. Yeah, you'll stick Spoiler together. Spoiler alert: They don't do that <laughs> because. Why would we listen to Hu Yang? Yeah. He's like, you always work better when you stick together. And they're like, yeah, okay, whatever, robot. <laughs> Just fix whatever, the shit. Whatever, bro, we're yeah. out. Yeah. David Tennant, we don't care. <laughs> Stop talking. What do you know, 10th Doctor? <laughs> what and do you know? 14th Doctor now, too, I yes. think. Yeah. yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so they go off. Uh, they run into uh, Mark and Hadi. And I have to get it out of the way because I made a bold prediction. That I was 100% wrong on. I said Mark was going to be Ezra. He's they just a- killed him and yeah. like there was nothing there. We well, just like, they killed him and that was the end of it pretty much. It's not that there, there's green smoke. Which I, I talked to you off our yes, recording about. Yes, we did. About, yeah, we did talk about it. That that's, implicates its night sister magic. Um, that Now maybe he still is someone that's dead that was resurrected. We do get to see him use a cool two-sided lightsaber. Maybe it's Darth Maul? I don't know. That'd be kind of cool, especially given the history between Maul and Ahsoka. I mean, here's this question. Do we think, because we don't have an answer for it as of episode six, do you think we're going to get an answer to this question, though, somewhere down the line? (sighs) Okay. Jumping right ahead to episode six, um, that's what the Night Sisters are there for. They're going to resurrect dead warriors. They've done it before with their own. I guess. Um, I think they're going to resurrect either dead Night Sisters, dead Jedi. Dead, dead Sith, maybe uh-huh. all of the above, maybe dead stormtroopers and stuff. Maybe I think that that's what they're there for, and I think Marak was to prepare us for that. Like it's like that's like it, uh, Els- Elspeth did that on her own. She made one. Now we have three other Night Sisters who seemingly are more powerful than her, mm-hmm. and they're gonna. And that that's what's getting loaded onto Thrawn's Chimera is a bunch of dead bodies. Maybe even the stormtroopers that he has are already dead bodies. What do we know? Yeah, yeah. like, it's so, I, it's gonna, like, I think that's what the Night Sisters are there for. They're gonna... Interesting. Yeah. Um, but, so, yeah, they they beat Marak. Sabine tells Ahsoka, go off, I got this, don't worry, I, I can handle uh, this little bitch on my own. <laughs> and, and Ahsoka, instead of being like, yeah, but if we double team her, it'll take half a second, she's like, all right, cool, I'm gonna go. <laughs> He's out. Yeah, yeah. Directly not listening to Hu Yang. <laughs> yeah, Because no. why would we listen to Hu Yang? Yeah, and so Sabine and Hadi get into a fight, um, and basically... She pulls a, a hottie, pulls a Batman, throws a smoke pellet down, and disappears. <laughs> yes. Uh, and while that's happening, Ahsoka engages with uh, Balin, and right before they're about to fight, he like throws some shade at her, and he's like, "Oh, you know, uh, Anakin sucked, <laughs> and, and you suck too." <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And he's pretty much like, "We don't have to do this." Yeah. Yeah, you, we don't have to fight each other, but, but like, I'm serving a higher purpose, and, but, like, being very, you know, whatever you want to say. Be racist about it, to yeah, be honest. Like, kind of. I'm serving a higher purpose. I'm better than you. Yeah. 
and they start fighting. Uh, she sees Hadi arrive without Sabine, and she's like, oh, she killed Sabine, so she throws Hadi into a rock wall, like which is enough distraction that Balin knocks her, you know, into the ocean. Um, into the ocean, I will say. But she does see that Sabine is alive. Last right. minute, though, Sabine does show up. Yeah, and she's like, Sabine, destroy the map, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was going to mention that she burns her hand on the map, but it doesn't, seemingly so far, hasn't been that important. I've seen people say that's how she gets to the world between worlds, and I'm like, how? How does that explain it at all? <laughs> like, um, there is no explanation for episode yeah. five, but we'll get there. <laughs> so uh, Sabine has the map, and she's got a gun to it, and Balin's like, listen, like... And we already know she's not going to shoot it. It's yeah. really annoying. Yeah. Like, that's well, just not her... You know, she wants to see Ezra. That doesn't matter that, like, if she gets rid of this thing, we might not see Thrawn. Like, yeah. it's not about not defeating Thrawn. It's about seeing Ezra. Right. And, like, she has, like, she has decided Ezra is the most important thing. So it doesn't matter that Thrawn is also there. Involved. Right. Yeah. Um, and Balin either uses the Force to read her mind or just sense her intentions. And he puts away his lightsaber because he's like, I don't even need to fight her. Like, he's like, he's like, I can charm her with my words. He's like, listen, come with me willingly and you'll be reunited with Ezra. And she's like, okay, here's the map. And he's like, cool. Hottie starts choking her and he's like, hey. No, no I made a yeah, promise. Yeah, yeah, she's not going to be harmed. <laughs> cut, cut that out. But they have like, you know, hot lesbian angst towards each other through all yes. these episodes. <laughs> and... Uh, the ep- so they, they get- I mean, look, yeah, I, I'll say this. I think there's probably a situation in which all four of them, Ahsoka, Balin, Shin, and Sabine, are all together. Yeah. Like, on the, on the same side. I can see that happening, too. Like, yeah. I do think, I don't know for what purpose. I don't know exactly what they're trying to do, but I do think we will get that. Yeah. I think that's one of the few things that is almost like we've been playing, too. We right. just haven't gotten there. I can think of two scenarios. We'll, we'll address it in, after episode six. So the map's fully decoded. Mm-hmm. Uh, Balin, Sabine, and Shin go up, up to the bridge. Meanwhile, Hera is arriving with her son and some uh, New Republic forces. They're like, all right, we got to stop this ship. The ship just takes off, destroying some of the uh, forces right away. Mm-hmm. But Hera and her son are okay. They land on the planet. And... Uh, the episode ends with Ahsoka waking up in the world between worlds and she hears hello snips and she turns around and it's Anakin standing there and we get a little bit of the Darth Vader theme right before the episode yes. cuts to black and it is Hayden Christensen yes. just... that particular scene though they took from episode 3 where, ah. he's, where he's looking at Padme in mm-hmm. bed and he's smiling at her the only thing that they did was in the scene he has his arm up like, like he's up against the wall looking at her they just mm-hmm. digitally remove the arm and like it, but he makes like the same smile and everything like that. And I'm like, well, that's kind of weird. Cause like Ahsoka was his, you know, apprentice, whereas Padme was his wife. Like he really shouldn't be giving his apprentice the same kind of look he gave his wife, but eh, whatever. Well, let's not think about <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> um, and then we go into episode, episode five, or I should say part five, Shadow Warrior, written and directed by Dave Filoni. And it's Quite frank, possibly the worst episode. Yeah, which I I know we're going to be in the minority saying that because everyone online is like, oh, it's the greatest thing ever. Oh, Anakin, blah, blah. Like, uh, uh, I, I... I just... What, what was the point, everybody? What was the point? <laughs> it premiered September 12th, 2023. Um, so Hera and her son are there. They run into Hu Yang, who's like, oh, they didn't listen to me. I asked... He, he has a... Uh, Sabine's uh, helmet because mm-hmm. uh, it fell off during her fight with Shin yes. and everything and he's like and they can't find him yeah and they think that they're probably both gone right that they're... and then they do find out that like Jason basically feels Ahsoka through the force and is like don't you hear the lightsabers battling yeah and so Jason is like helping them find where where, where so- she is where Ahsoka which is the is. world between worlds right but it's also under the ocean um, yes um and Hu Yang says, like, oh, Jason's father was a was a Jedi and he has abilities, blah, blah, blah. I Listen, I, I think it's very heavily pulling in the Jason solo from Legends. Like, his name yeah. is Jason and he has special force abilities that no one else has. I think uh, Jason solo could communicate with 
uh, like robots and like he could feel them through mm-hmm. the force and stuff like that. So, all right, well, <laughs> um, so Sabine's at the world in between worlds and she's talking. Sabine, Ahsoka. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Ahsoka's in the world between worlds and she's talking with Anakin and he's like, I'm here to. Can, I'm here to train you. Yeah, finish you your, your training. last lesson. Yeah, you, you're going to learn a lesson. And he pu- he he says, live or die, and pulls out his lightsaber. And she's like, I'm not going to fight you. And he's like, oh, I've heard that before. Ah, ha, 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 ha. He's talking about Luke. Ah, ha, ha. Um, and they start fighting each other. And basically, she's like, listen, what are you They're gonna- going through all of her, like, one of the things that's happening, too, is they're going through, like, her past what? and, like, part Anakin did learn to have the high ground because he yes. cuts the ground out from underneath yes. her. And yes, she falls into a battle from the Clone Wars. <laughs> yes, we're getting Clone Wars scenes, yeah. which is like fun. But again, yeah. it's not, it doesn't lead to anything. At, at the end, like, yeah, she wins or learns the lesson and yeah. gets the return to life. But like, how did, what did we learn that we got there? Was it cool? Yes, it was cool. Did it mean anything or serve any purpose? No. <laughs> like, no, unless, like, its purpose has yet to be seen. But in which case, we just spent a very long... It's not even a long episode. We spent, like, 30 minutes doing this shit and didn't get an answer as to why we're doing this I, shit. It's, I saw an interview with Dave. <laughs> the interviewer asked him what was the lesson that Ahsoka had was learned, and he said to the interviewer, what do you think the lesson was? And I'm like, oh you're the writer and director of this episode. Like, you have to know what the lesson is. You can't, like, let, like I've seen people on the internet talk about it, and they're like, oh, it's that she has to learn to be okay with people dying. Like, it's, I'm like, what the, like. Uh, you know, and I want to say this, and I'm sorry I'm throwing you under the bus, my lovely boyfriend. But, like, he's into Star Wars, but not as, like, clearly as we are as we're sitting here talking about it. Yeah. And, like, he watched this episode and thought it was amazing, but, like, his takeaways were very, like, oh, well, I like seeing the Clone Wars stuff because I never watched the Clone Wars because I don't really watch animated stuff. And I was like, okay, but you didn't really get anything out of the Clone Wars. Yeah. Like, I like I didn't understand from his perspective how he thought he got anything out of it because, like, that was nothing. Like, woohoo, you got to see her being, like, her being small and, like, being a Padawan, but, like, you didn't get yeah. anything and then i was like well what was the lesson and he really couldn't tell me but like he also was like well you know i like at the end that like she was like in white and stuff and like was wearing white and i was like but she's wearing white the entirety in rebels we're just yeah. back at her rebels outfit like this isn't like i don't know what the lesson was or what we were trying to do here because all the like meaning and symbolism is out the window yeah. if you know anything about star wars like you don't like there's nothing here but so Jason uses his magical abilities and tells them to fly lower, mm-hmm. and they do, and they find they find Ahsoka's body in the water, which she had to physically be like. It's not like the world between worlds was. They've just They've been her mind. talking about like for like, especially she has to be there because like otherwise she was drowning in water for like eight hours. Yeah, and, like yeah, I, like, she's been there for almost a day. We do get the line where I had to you know school you a little bit in this. We get Senator Organa can't buy us any more time. Um, you thought they said General Organa, but they say... Did se- you did, did you recheck and see yeah, if it was Senator? They say Senator Organa. My, que- my question is, Senator of what? <laughs> because Alderaan's gone. Unless it's like Puerto Rico and she's a senator that doesn't actually get to vote. Like it's just an honorary senator or something. Um, or maybe she moved to Naboo. Like she was like, hey, my real mom was, was the queen and senator from... Naboo. Yeah, let, yeah. Me, let me move there. I'll meet with my, you know, my biological family that's still alive there, presumably. Um, I don't know. But, but uh, I shouldn't say real mom. I should say biological mom. So anyway, they find Ahsoka's body. She wakes up. Uh, Hu Yang tells her it's been one rotation, which I guess means 24 hours, like a day. Yes. Um, I didn't know if it meant a day or a year at first, but since they're still on the planet, I'm going to say it's not a year. <laughs> I didn't know if he meant a rotation around the sun, but... Um, She's like, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to go talk to the whales. And <laughs> they're going to take us and to... they're going to take us there. To because where, where the Sabina's. whales are the path, yeah. right? Yeah. And it works. The, a big whale comes up and Ahsoka holds it. In the hand. meantime, they, uh, the New Republic has sent people after Syndulla and Ahsoka. And literally, they, like, basically, like, you know, cut them off and are like, you won't believe what we're doing right now. Yeah. And they're like, 
They're going with the whales. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Ahsoka and Huye. Uh, yes. Hera's going to have some other troubles of her own, um, presumably. Um, but what's good? To, what's the good of being a general if you don't get to pull rank every so often, like she says? But that leads us to episode six. Uh, far, far, part six. Far, far away. Directed by Jennifer Getzinger. And written by Dave Filoni. What a f- name for an episode, by the way. <laughs> it premiered September nineteenth, twenty twenty-three. Uh, it starts off with Ahsoka and Hu Yang on the ship, and they're talking. And he's like, "Oh, this reminds me of a story from uh, that I used to tell the Jedi children." She's like, "Yeah, I remember your stories. I don't want to hear it." No, you know what? Actually, go ahead and tell it. And he goes, All "Oh, right. because he wants to know what else is going on." And she was like. Ah, uh, well, Sabine went willingly, and he's like, well, that's impossible. He's, she was like, no, I yeah, saw it. I forgot to, because Ahsoka <coughs> holds the broken piece. <coughs> Balin destroyed the map after mm-hmm. they got all the information they needed. From, she holds the broken piece and can also use the Force to, you know, use the dete- d- detective lifetime. mode from the Arkham games. And yes, she can, like, recreate yeah. a little bit of what happened. Yeah, um, listen, I... I I know I'm in the minority with these episodes and everything, and I know Dave Filoni is a god in the Star Wars fans' eyes right now and everything, but if I I like I, criticism across the board. And if you're going to criticize everything that Ray did in Episode Nine, you have to criticize this stuff too. Like, Or if you want to criticize, oh, this magical dagger that lined up with the broken piece of uh, the second Death Star and everything like that, where the f*** did this map come from that shows you where... Thrawn is like who made this map that shows you where Thrawn's from well apparently because he's with the death of Miri, I'm assuming this is one of those where like the map is a death of Miri map to get to the death of Miri, right. like that kind of thing but like but we don't in, ever get that explanation it was in now. an ancient death of Miri temple and everything like Fair. same exact thing as the as the dagger that Ray had Ahsoka talks to the uh Purgle same exact thing as that Ray, was weird. as Ray talking to the snake. I don't in like the talking nine. to the purgle. I don't mind her like recreating things using the force. Like I can understand where that might take a lot of like mental power, but I can understand being able to do that. But, like you'd have to be a master the way she is. Like you've had to be trained in the force for years. I think, but like I can like understand that. I don't get the purgle thing. My my thing <laughs> is if if you're gonna criticize criticize equally. Like I think episode yeah. nine's a disaster. <clears throat> I don't, I, it, it, mostly episode nine is a disaster because fans had such a negative reaction to episode eight, which I enjoyed. But if you're going to criticize, criticize equally, because the same people I've seen that talk about how horrible the sequels are and blah, 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 they need to redo them and all this stuff are loving what's going on with Ahsoka right now. And I'm like, but it's the same bullshit that you complained about. <laughs> like, uh, And it, it's the same bullshit not going anywhere. Right. Even more so. Like, yes. But so, yeah, uh, Ahsoka says to Hu Yang, yeah, go ahead and tell me one of the stories. And David Tennant says, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Yes, yeah. Dave Filoni, we all love Star Wars. Thank you. I'm really trying mm-hmm. not to be negative, but it, he's pushing my limit with this, with this bullshit. Um, but and then we cut to the Dr. Pershing episode of, of, of uh, Ahsoka. But it is interesting characters at the same time. Uh, so we're with Sabine, Balin, Shin, uh, Elsbeth, they arrive on the Dathomir homeworld, which I forget. Perdea. Perdea, thank you, yes. The, they're like, okay, we're getting a signal from here, let's land at this temple, blah, blah, blah. They go They go to it, they meet some night sisters, I guess, like... They're, Great mothers, yes. Yeah, yeah, they're, and so they're super powerful, and they're like, oh, yeah, we knew that you were... Co-. They kind of have, like, that Hecate or, yeah. you know, Witches 3 from Macbeth feeling yes. going on and everything. And they're like, yeah, we knew we were coming. Thrawn, yeah. Thrawn believed you were coming, and, like... Yeah, and then Thrawn shows up with the f***ing Chimera, baby. <laughs> with the it's, Chimera. It's this huge... And Thrawn just going the extra steps, like... You know, I could land by it or, you know, take a shuttle <laughs> down. Or, nah, let me just park this giant ship right on top of their temple. And he does. And, and it's awesome. I got to admit. And we see all these stormtroopers that are just like battle worn, like have, like their helmets are cracked. And some of them have like different looking helmets and everything. And they're chanting, Thrawn, 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 Thrawn. And in walks Elon Musk. <laughs> and I have to say, uh, you, look, the actor that plays him, perfect voice. I get why he was the voice actor in, in Rebels. 
absolutely nails the voice. Eyes, awesome. They get they have that red effect on them that's perfect. I'll even go so far as to say blue makeup looks cool and believable and everything like that. Eh, I don't want a body shame, but he's heavy. He doesn't look like no, a Thrawn. He doesn't look like a warrior. He he doesn't even look like Thrawn's a Thrawn's notably very thin, very yes, like Yes. And he's on this planet that's supposed to be hard to survive on. He's not wanting for any meals. He's been getting plenty of food. Um, but that I'll put that aside because everything else about him works. It's just, it took away, it took me out of it. For, it, I, it does take you out. When yeah. you're expecting, like, this very, like, grand, almost, like, evil, like, presence, and then you get that, it's yeah. like, his presence isn't in the scene the way you expect it. Like, you expect to throw on to walk into a scene and be like, Oh, Don's here. Like, like, it's like Darth Vader walked yes, in the room. Times yes. a thousand. <laughs> like, but yes. Um, and maybe, maybe they'll maybe they'll be worked into the story. Like, and I, like I said, I don't want to body shame the actor. But when you're an actor, 50% is what you do, and 50% is how you look. And he doesn't look the role. Um, that's And that's where I'm just going to leave it at. Um, but, so yes, he's like, okay, well... Balin's like, listen, I promised Sabine that she could go meet her friend Ezra, and Thrawn's like, yeah, if Ezra's still alive, go ahead, meet him. That's cool. Like, I have yeah, no idea yeah. if he's alive. Yeah, like, Here's our latest intel. I'll, I'll even give you a, a, a steed to ride, which she rides some cool wolf horse thing. I know, I love um, it. Yeah, and, he, and he's like, and I'll give you supplies. Like, that's that's fine. Like, you allowed them to use the map and everything. Like, yeah, that's fine. You can go do that. Uh, and she leaves, and after she leaves... Uh, Balin's like, yeah, you know, I promised her safe passage. And Thrawn's like, but I made no promise myself. And he's like, after she finds Ezra, kill them both. <laughs> and uh, and then he's he tells the Night Sisters, you know, it's time to start with the plan and everything. They start loading up coffins into the Chimera because they're definitely, you know, as I mentioned before, dead bodies that they're going to resurrect or something. Um, we meet Enoch, one of the stormtroopers that's like Thrawn's second in command, who's got like a cool stormtrooper gold mask thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sabine goes off and uh, she runs into the Tuscan Raiders who are inspired by samurai um, gets into yes. a fight with them luckily they decide to only shoot and hit her in her uh, armor the yep. uh, Beskar armor that mm -hmm. and she manages to you know kill most of them and the ones that survive flee off uh, but they'll be back later and in greater number. And then the weird <laughs> turtle people show up. I, I literally thought Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. She meets the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles of this planet. And they take her to Ezra because they recognize the rebel shields that she has. And uh, Ezra's just like, oh, hey. Oh. Thanks you, for showing up. <laughs> you know he sensed her coming and was like, oh, I'm going to stand here all sexy and cool looking. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's like, sup, babe? <laughs> Are you, like, it's do not, I look cool enough, guys? Yeah, it's it's almost like uh, Bo Katan <laughs> laying, draping herself right. in, in her chair when Mando was showing up. Yeah, um, but so uh, he's like, hey, what's going on, baby? And she's like, oh, Ezra. And he's like, yo, that's so cool that you found me, and like, you totally didn't risk the galaxy getting destroyed or anything. And she's like, well, let's talk about that later. <laughs> Can I just be happy that I found you? <laughs> <laughs> and you know he's gonna be pissed later yeah yeah he can communicate with the teenage mutant ninja turtles he's like hey leonardo pack up we're moving he's like that's how they survive on this planet they're always moving around and uh balin and uh, Sh uh shin decide like they're they're on their mounts chasing after sabine and they run into the samurai tuscan raiders and are like mm -hmm. mm, maybe we can make an alliance with these people and I, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that happens in that episode? No, that's pretty much it. Yeah, like the, the great mothers are loading uh, up the uh, bodies. At one point, Elsbeth is pretty much just like, make sure you shoot down any Purgle and oh, try to get away. Yes, and the great the great mothers are like, oh, we sense a Jedi coming here. And Thrawn's like, ah, it's Ahsoka. She's alive. Balin didn't kill her. Give me all and the Elspeth information like, on no, it. No, no, no. She's dead. And yeah, like, yeah. they're like, and he's like, hmm, no. Yeah. She alive. Yeah, give me all the information on her. I want to know her home world, who trained her, everything. Because that's, that's who Thrawn, Thrawn is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where the episode ends. Um, but so, yeah. I, it was... It, I have hope for where it goes. I think this is probably going to be like the Empire. Um, like, it's going to end on a down note. Like, our heroes are going to... Like, either Ahsoka gets killed, or 
Sabine does or Ezra does. Like, well, if, if Ezra died, then it's all for naught. You know what I mean? Like, and that would be the ultimate, like... Uh, well, like I told you, there's no way they can all get back to the regular, like, world, yeah. right? Like, that's just impossible. Yeah. And... I don't know. I just, because we know this is leading to a movie with Thrawn, like, I think Thrawn has to make it back, right? right? Like, so let's assume Thrawn is one of the few people that have to make it back. So one of our good guys has to die. And I almost want to say it's Ahsoka because I feel like she's lived her path already, mm. right? Like, the new generation is coming in. And maybe that was the lesson, her learning that death. Like, when you need to die, you need to die, right? Yeah. Like, you're, you're accepting your death. I'm going to make uh, four predictions. Okay. Two of them, I think, are 100% set. Two of them, I just thought of now. Okay. So the one that I predict for... One that I just came up with for now... Well, it was just what you said. Ahsoka's going to die. Mm-hmm. The, her, this is her swan song blah 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 she and she dies for some purpose like she said i mean do we know if they've said that there's gonna be a second season of Ahsoka? i don't think they have so I don't like, think let's they have. assume this is only yeah a uh, one season thing so that's what i second one that i thought of is thrawn when he gets back to the galaxy he's the one that sets up having the emperor resurrected um like he takes everything that they've been doing so far with project necromancer and mm-hmm. all that and he sets up having, and he uses the Night Sisters, and they do it on the home world of the Sith and everything, so that it's hidden from everyone else. And that's somehow how Palpatine came back. <laughs> okay, I'm willing to believe that. That's, yeah. that's logical to me. That's that's second prediction. Now for my two predictions that I had in mind that I know 100% um, will happen. One is that those dead bodies are going to get resurrected. That was the prediction, one of my predictions that I have, that, that the Night Sisters are going to resurrect mm-hmm. those dead bodies in the coffins and everything. Maybe even the Stormtroopers are already dead bodies that they've resurrected, and that's why Thrawn has an alliance with them or something. And then my last bold prediction that I uh, know 100% will happen, we're going to get more ass shots of Hera Sindula. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which, uh, listen... Mary Elizabeth Winstead, the actress that plays her, I'm not saying it's bad. It's nice. Um, but she, re- like she, do- she, she does fill out those orange pants very well. But I can't remember in my entire life there being this many ass shots in Star Wars as there have been in this series. Uh, uh, even when Leia was in that bikini, it wasn't as, you know, used as, as, as it has been here. Which, you know, good for Obi-Wan, because uh, that's his wife in real life. Mm-hmm. You know, McGregor or her are her married in real life. But yeah, I mean, it's a nice ass, but we're going to get a lot more ass shots over in, in this show. Um. um, okay, so... I'm trying to think about what my prediction is. I think we get one more Anakin mm. sighting, at least. Okay. Right? I think it's bound to happen. Also, I don't even think Ahsoka necessarily has to die. She might just be abandoned on that planet. Like, mm-hmm. I do think that's also, like, a possibility. Um, I think some weird teaming up stuff is going to happen between our good guys and Balin and Shin. And whatever Balin's up to. Yeah. We were talking about it in the car. The fact that he's, like, in episode six was very, um, well, you know, this is the land of my stories. And, yeah. like, this is... I never th- I thought any of this was real. I'm serving but, a higher purpose. Yes, like, and I am, I'm here to find the beginning, because I wish the end of all the fighting. He and like, says to Shin that something's calling him, can't you hear it? So, like... Yeah, so something's definitely weird going on with him. Yeah. And... This also going on with Hu Yang and Ahsoka being, like, with the stories, I think... Balin is eventually going to, like, tell Ahsoka, like, oh, I'm here trying to do this, and it's going to be some crazy story, and she's going to be like, Balin, that's a story. Yeah. And Hu Yang's going to be like, well, actually, yeah, it's a story, but, like, it could, it, you know, my stories are based in, like, history. Yeah. And, like, whatever they're trying to do has something to do with some, like, long-lost Jedi folklore of some sort. Possibly. Don't know what it's leading towards, because I have no idea... Like, I don't know if there's anything in, like, canon legacy that, like, goes to this. But, you know, I would say that there's something to that at the very least. Yeah. The only thing, I, it's upsetting just in general that he passed away, but the fact that Ray Stevenson died and 
this character is by far the most interesting character so far. Maybe Thrawn will be more interesting, but I think uh, Balin's the most interesting character in this series. So he's the most complex and makes me wonder what's going on with him. And I would like like to have seen him get his own show or something like that. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I definitely, like I said, he's a good character. And I'm curious as to what what, what, he's... what he's doing in regards to anything. Because, like, obviously... Also, I think if they are up to something involving a story, I think there's a total possibility Thrawn comes in and is like, oh yeah, I knew about that story. That's yeah. what I was trying to do all along. You guys are just acting exactly how I expected you because you're acting to the story and this is what I was trying to do. Yeah. Because that would be a very Thrawn thing to be like, huh, of course I know the old Jedi stories and culture. I'm here to enact it and yeah. you're all my pawns. Yeah. And I can see that being like the like end of the season, Thrawn being like, you all did what I wanted you to do. Au revoir. Yeah. Goodbye. I'm I'm going to go take over the galaxy. You are on my pawns. I think you're right. All right. Well, we'll have to see. We have two more episodes to go. And uh, then whenever the Heir to the Empire movie gets made, we'll see what, what that does. <laughs> but uh, that's all for this week. And that concludes this week's episode of the Once Again Podcast. Thank you for joining us. Any questions, comments, or critiques can be addressed to our email at onceagainpod at gmail.com. Follow us on, at onceagainpod, all one word, on Twitter and Instagram. Oh, on um, X or Instagram. <laughs> if you're feeling generous and would like to contribute to the podcast, we have several tiers available on patreon.com slash onceagainpod. Also, a like and a share would be greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a wonderful day. And remember, we will entertain you. We will always entertain you.